Hi there! Welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me once again. Well today I've got a brand new kit. Um, it's been out on the market I think for maybe the best part of a year actually but it's brand new to me. The 70 second scale MiG-25 Foxbat PD. Now those of you who are not very well familiar with Soviet fighters and the Foxbat in particular uh, which probably include me really. Um, I always admired this aircraft. I was also a bit frightened of it in the 70s. It was like a, a boogeyman aircraft in the Cold War. The Americans were frightened of it. The Brits were frightened of it. Everybody was frightened of it. It was one of the most powerful, fastest planes of all time. And of course, um, to try and combat this aircraft, the Americans didn't really have a, a good enough um, opponent for it until they brought out the F-15 Eagle. And it was designed specifically to shoot down these planes. Um, but this came out um, in the late 60s, 69 I think, 70. It was a very high level interceptor initially, which is what this one is, the PD. They also brought out a high level uh, reconnaissance version, the RBT. Uh, there's also um, an RB version, slightly different dimensions on the nose I think. And also the BM version, which is very similar to this, but it's, um, it's like a ground attack strike fighter version designed to take out radar sites and anti-aircraft sites. So the, the Russians have got a lot of these aircraft. Um, it's very, very powerful. They've got two massive engines, and that's the real secret of the plane, and gave it most of its performance. Um, everybody in the West feared that it was superior to anything that we had at the time, but then a um, Soviet uh, pilot defected and landed in uh, Japan at an airport, and the Americans got their hands all over this, and they actually found out that whilst the design was really good, uh, some of the materials were not so good and um, it used to expand a lot and it, it was unreliable with its engines and they realised it wasn't that brilliant and the F-15 Eagle they, they'd already designed and then brought out was in fact superior. However, for its day, early 70s, this kind of ruled the skies in the Cold War. So, we've got the ICM 172nd version, so this is the high level interceptor with its uh, air to air missiles for shooting down other American fighters would be the intention. It is product number 72177. On the side we've got a couple of nice bits of artwork. I'll bring you into this. Uh, get rid of those nasty reflections. Uh, nice couple of examples of uh, the options in terms of schemes that they've got here. Uh, number 17 and number 56. Now this um, kit is the 72nd scale version as I mentioned. Uh, I've also done the review on the Revell RBT version, which is the high level reconnaissance version, and it was beautiful. And the same ICM model as this, the PD, high level interceptor fighter, in 148 scale, I reviewed that too, and that was just awesome. And I know lots of people have built that, and everybody speaks very highly of it. I'm probably selling that on only because it's quite big, it's a bit of a monster to be honest, it's a big plane, this. You know, for a fighter jet, it's almost 50% bigger than you'd kind of expect it to be. It's sort of um, kind of F-14 Tomcat size, big old meaty old bird. So, I thought I'd get myself this, and then maybe have this in the cabinet, because it's a bit smaller, it'll fit. So, without further ado, I haven't opened this, it's just literally arrived in the post, so let's have a look. Normally, ICM boxes are notoriously hard to get into. They're usually a box within a box. It's got some unusual tape here. A second. There we go. Right, we're released. Whether the top will come off is the real challenge of these. Often it, it won't. It will come off very easily. Actually, that was nice and easy. Right, there we go. Let's have a look. <coughs> box within a box, as I mentioned. Oh, here we go. They always look good in RCM. They, you know, they always pack them. Although it's in one big bag, I'm not that keen on it. It's a nice bag. And they don't have a lot of things flying around too loose. They always pack it quite well. So, let's see what we've got. Instructions. Do not scold him. We will replace everything, which is very nice from ICM, saying that they can they have an after-sales service for you to get a spare part. That's very good. I like that. Okay, let's move that away. Let's see what we've got. Hopefully we'll come to that in a second. Let's zoom you in on these instructions. So, a very iconic aircraft, it's twin tails, the MiG-25, got some baffles trying to escape, so let's have a look at those first. We have got, gosh, some really tiny 
stencils. They are tiny. Um, my glasses, I've got to be honest, are not powerful enough at this range. You can probably see better than I can because I can't make out whether they really do say anything or whether it's just squiggly lines looking like writing, which at 70 second scale is kind of understandable in fairness. It's, um, you know, it, you would struggle to read it. I think it's got some writing here at the top. My Russian's not very good, so I can't actually tell you what it says, but um, it looks quite nice. ICM's decals are usually pretty good. But, so. Then we've got the main ones, and we've got, uh, what is it, Egyptian Air Force, Iraqi Air Force, I think it is. I think it's Iraq and two Russian options. Uh, they look nice and bright, don't they? Very nice decals there. Yeah, can't see any problem with those. Smashing. Okay, so back to the instructions. <coughs> so a little bit of a um, little bit of blurb. It says, duh, 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 "End of the 60s, the McCoy Design Bureau developed the world's first interceptor capable of Mach 3." No wonder the Americans were wetting their pants. I mean, that's fast, isn't it? So what's that? That's uh, so that's 2,000 miles an hour, pretty much. Jeez, that's a lot of speed. Um, it said it was improved with avionics and missiles, and production carried on uh, right up to 1978, and that they were used in, in the late 80s, and of course they were used by other air forces like uh, Iraq, Syria, and Libya. Iraq, Syria, and Libya. Oh dear, uh, these of course are some of the planes that <laughs> I think got knocked out on the ground in the two Gulf Wars for Iraq, certainly, and um, yeah, <clears throat> I don't know if they did any better with the Libyan Air Force either, because I know that they got knocked out as well in the uh, the Arab Spring uh, conflict in, uh, what was it, 2011? Anyway, let's move on. So, gives you technical specification, and it tells you range, in kilometres, 2,400 miles of the, sorry, kilometres with a drop tank, 1730 standard. And then we've got, yep, and we've got the sprue map, which is nice. I like that they do this because it makes it very clear and it's not tiny. You can actually see it clearly. And then there's another one here, just showing you, there's only a couple of items that you don't use in fairness. It's nearly all the items that are appropriate. So, in terms of building up, you build up your cockpit sides first. Then you move on to, looks like part of the, oh it's the gear bay, making the front leg gear for the nose wheel <coughs> underneath the cockpit. Then you're building in your cockpit itself with your instrumentation. And you're building that and installing it into the side of the, one side I should say, of the cockpit. Then we've got the ejector seat. Not plenty of using that in Mac 3, would you? But anyway, <laughs> and that gets mounted into the uh, the tub, the cockpit. It's it's quite a cramped little cockpit. This for such a big, fast plane, it's very tight with the look of it. There's no free room. Not like some of the more modern Soviet planes, like the um, what's it called, the duck bill. I forget the name. The Su-34, is it? <coughs> that's that's quite a big cockpit. And then you bring in your other cockpit side, and then you mount that. I don't like the idea of having this uh, leg already sticking out, that's quite risky. Oh, I don't know if there's a way to do that later. I think I'd probably recommend that. Anyway, then, you, then you're building in your ramps for your intakes. They go in and get attached. So you sort of start at the front and you work back in this aircraft. It's kind of a modular construction, isn't it? Then you've got your engine intakes with your fans, they're going in inside the, uh, the intake trunking. Then you've got the sort of floor of the plane as it were, underside. <coughs> and you're building in the, the gear bays, uh, gear wells, the sort of side on it would seem on this aircraft. So it tucks into the side. And then you're building that and put, bringing it in underneath and start working on the actual main gear legs themselves and uh, there's another um, bulkhead there at the back as you can see for the engines to go through 
uh, you build up the whole of the leg and then you insert them. Another second bulkhead is going on. <coughs> so there's a bulkhead. Seems to show it twice, perhaps I'm misunderstanding something. That's just the way that they've done the demonstration. It's what you've already done here. Uh, and then you, you build on the side plates, the side sort of fences uh, around the engine. Side pods as it were, if it was a racing car. Those both going on at both sides. Then you're building up your jet pipes. Afterburner rings, it looks really good, I've got to say. And then you've got your exhaust nozzles. And again, it looks good this. Got a feeling that this won't need any aftermarket, I don't think. <clears throat> then you build, bring the top of the actual bodywork in for the main fuselage on. And then you're building up your tail planes. And you've got two sides and your rudders to put on times two. Then you bring those in. This is very like the, the bigger 48 scale kit, actually. It's very reminiscent of it, I've got to say. Then you bring those in on either side. Um, I quite like the way they've, they've conceptualised this. It looks like it would avoid seams, I think. And then we've got a bit of a ECM pod at the back there, just above the engines on the top. And then you build up your wings and add your pylons. And you've got flaps and ailerons. It, it, for 70 seconds scale, this looks brilliant, isn't it? So, when your wing comes in on the starboard side, then they want you to do exactly the same as you've seen on the port side, and then you put the nose on. Now, the nose is two halves, which is a bit disappointing. I always wish that you know this slide mould a single piece, which you do get on a lot of kits now, it's quite common, so I'm not sure why ICM did it differently. <coughs> but hopefully, if the fit is good, it shouldn't be a major issue. Then you've got your gear doors going in and both sides. I like the way it shows one side then another. It's really clear actually, it's very good. Um, you've got mm, two half sides split wheels. I don't don't care for that either, if I'm honest. And they don't look like the weight on wheels, but we will see when we get to the plastic. And then you've got your air-to-air -air missiles. Um, and I'm trying to remember what they're called. And these are very much the ones from the Cold War that I remember. Um, they're an AMRAM, I think, and I can't remember the name of them, but they've got some code names and they're quite wicked looking. Then you build up your little canopy piece with the gun sight, and you can have the cockpit open or closed, which is really, really good. Nice to have that option. And then you've got the option of the slipper tank underneath, which I probably won't bother with, to be honest, on mine. Because um, it looks too much like the reconnaissance plane when you do that. Uh, and there you go, it's kind of done. It's, it's, it looks like a nice kit, I've got to say. Uh, then there are millions of stencils. How many are there? 600? Oh, it... No, surely not. No. Doesn't make it clear how many there are, but there's quite a few. It's phantom like this. That's going to be fun. So then we've got the, uh, the Russian option here with the colour call out. Which looks quite nice. Soviet Air Force 1986. And then you've got the, oh it's the Libyan Air Force, not Iraqis. I'm not very good with my flags obviously. Libyan Air Force in 1990s. Um, oh sorry, yes I was right the first time. It is Iraqi, that's Iraqi, this is Libya, the green. It's quite odd, I don't recognise the Libyan flag on the plane at all. Sorry if I'm ignorant folks, I just, uh, it's not one I recognise. So you've got three options in actual fact. So that's really good isn't it? So, zoom out again. And don't forget, if you miss if Carpet Monster gets any of your parts, you can you can contact them. And uh, somebody was talking about this. I was watching a show. It may have been on uh, Phil Flory's site, uh, and somebody mentioned that they actually were really good at sorting out parts, spare parts at ICM. So well done to you. Anyway, let's have a look what we got. The one big bag. Let's just gently open that and pop it out. Yes, I wish they wouldn't put it in one bag. That's a bit silly. It does look a bit thrown together. First of all, we've got clear parts, and there's not a lot of it, of course, because it's got a tiny cockpit screen and a tiny cockpit window, if you like, canopy. Canopy is very small on this aircraft. There we go. But it looks nice, doesn't it? Um, it's got like a um, slightly frosted area at the back. Uh, so again, the actual bit that the pilot looks through is very, very small. It's remarkable. It looks good. Right, where to begin? Lots of sprues. There really are lots of sprues, actually. 
So we've got some side panels here, we've got some beautiful rivet detail. You can see that. Bring you in. Some very, very nice rivet detail here. And then we've got the uh, some of the exhaust uh, exhaust cans at the back. And then there's the ECM pod I mentioned there. That's a nice sprue. Then we've got some of these AMRAM, forgive me because I can't remember the name, I don't know the code name for them, but I've got something to do with the fish. But anyway, they're an air to air missile, very meaty, nasty looking thing. Yes, they look lovely. Look great panel detail, and yes, I like those. And another one the same. Then we have <coughs> the nose. Here we have the nose, two sides. I wish it wasn't so, but anyway, if they have done a good job, and I see them are pretty good in fairness, they've done a good job of the locating pins there. If they are in the right places, then it should go together okay. And we've got some pylons, obviously, for the weapons. Looks good. More weapons. There's four of those weapons sprues. Then we've got a big one, which is the the wings. I'll zoom out for this, and you can clearly see just how much panel detail and riveting detail you've got here. It looks really super. Very fine, nicely engraved panel lines. Exquisite, really. I mean, I keep pinching myself. This is only one seventy second. Remember, it's beautiful. That is really good. Same on the underside here. It's uh, very, very nice. Look at that. Yeah, that'll take a wash really nice, won't it? Beautiful. Then we've got a big sprue here. I'll zoom out for that one. And on this we've got a slipper tank and we've got the sides of the cockpit. The top, sorry, the bottom, I should say, not the top, that's the bottom. And again, look at the detail. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, isn't it? That's, you know, for one seventy second scale, this is, it's up there with Great Wall Hobby or Tamiya, isn't it? No doubt about it. In fact, it's a seventy second, I think it's better than Tamiya, actually. And I am a Tamiya fan, so that's High praise from me. And then you've got your little tail planes here. Again, plenty of detail there. It's beautiful. Then we've got our big sprue here with tails on it and rudders, tail planes. Look at this detail. Look at that. Oh, that is just gorgeous, isn't it, really? got a lovely sort of satin finish as well so it'll, it'll take a primer and uh, you take your paint really well I think. Uh, then we've got various parts of these uh, sort of sponsons as it were, the sort of side panels for the intakes here. Uh, bulkhead there for the engines and afterburner rings here. It's a stunning kit, this is. I think this is going to be a 10 out of 10 the way it's going, unless I find anything horrible. And look at the detail here, you know, 70 second scale. Look at the way that it's been figured so finely for those uh, flaps and ailerons. Beautiful. Stunning. Uh, clearly, we've got a little bit of slide moulding with this one. <coughs> because here we've got the engine jet pipes. See, it's got moulded detail all the way up them. It's very nice. And then we've got all sorts of little bits here. We've got uh, the legs, obviously. Nose leg, I think that is. And then you've got the main legs here. Lots of little tiny P-tails. Look how fine they are. p heads, look. Sensors, probes. Look at that. That's a stunner. But they didn't put weight on wheels. There is a little bit of flash on this spring now. There's a bit of flash on the uh, on the tyres here. I don't know if you can make that out. Just see it? Yeah, a little bit of flash. Um, but it's not on most of the parts. Just an odd one seems to be mainly on that tyre there. Can't really see it on anything else in fairness. 
Uh, and then you've got this, uh, again, beautiful detail here in the, the main gear bay. Uh, texture on the side wall of the gear bay. Um, yeah, I'm surprised it isn't weight on wheels. That's the only disappointment. I think you may have lost half a mark there. It might be a nine and a half only. Oh dear. <laughs> well, there we go. So, what do we make of it? So this is a kit that cost me... It's not that cheap actually, it's about £26 there, give or take a pound or so. So it's not a very cheap kit, but you can see why. Um, I mean, I think that the uh, the quality just shines through, doesn't it, really? It's uh, it's so well figured. If it goes together, a half as good as it looks, I think it's going to be an absolute winner, that one. Um, I think the artworks are probably the only thing that lets it down. Well, this particular one, it doesn't seem to be that inspiring compared to their other stuff, which is all quite dramatic. and uh, Yeah, a bit of a plain looking one, really. But uh, I'm not sure that sells it enough. Anyway, for me, uh, I think it's so nice, um, especially considering the scale it's at. You know, it's, that's like 48th or, or bigger in terms of the quality of the detail, the fine engraving in the surface and the rivets, the panels. It's beautiful. Nine and a half out of ten. Nearly got a ten, but can't give it ten, can you really? <laughs> that would be going overboard. But yeah, it's really excellent. And uh, if you want a MiG-25 that you can actually get in your cabinet, like me, I think it's a winner. <laughs> You've got to go for that. Um, but bear in mind that Revel, I think, are probably going to release this as well, because they often rebox the ICM kits. We've already had them do it on the 48th and the 72nd scaled. Um, RBT version of this, so I haven't seen it yet, but it's probably out or going to be out soon, so it may be cheaper. These are coming about three or four pounds cheaper than ICM, so be aware. So, anyway, big thumbs up from me. A beautiful kit, state of the art molding technology, very impressed. Everything you'd hope it would be, it looks like it's just absolutely nailed it, frankly. Stunning. So, thanks a lot from me. Hope you enjoyed the review, found it interesting and useful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, uh, give us a like. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then please do so. And if you have, then please ding the notification bell if you haven't done yet, because that helps you to get notified straight away if there's another one coming up uh, and you won't miss out. And uh, in the meantime, I'd say thank you all for joining me. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to have you along. And please all take care of yourselves. And I hope to see you again very soon. In the meantime, thanks a lot and bye for now.